Okay, so we're down in the in Mud today in County Mead. It's a little bit wet, but we've just managed to get out. We're down with the famous Robert Russell from Russell Fast Tracks. Um, he's going to give us a chat through about the history of the Fast Tracks from the earliest models from the start of the 90s through to the more recent models that he does be dealing with um, in his business. Just to get an understanding about the machine and what they're about. Robert, thanks a million for having us down. Hey, Alan, good to um, see you. Sorry, yeah. Sun didn't come out today, but it's still early in the year. It's so. still early in the year. Right, the fast track to me was launched in 1991. 91, yeah. So yeah. we're looking at the early 125 <clears throat> and 145 models. Uh, you made a very interesting uh, feature recently on the MB track, and there was sort of a I'm going to say a handover and early on. Yes. The MB track coming yeah. to the end around 1990. Yeah. And then JCB obviously were watching that space. Yeah. And they launched the 125 and 145. 145, yeah. So it was going with a similar concept using a chassis, central mounted cab, cab. and high speed capabilities. But they took it a step further. They went for full suspension. I don't think the MB track ever had a suspension on the back. It's not full suspension, but uh, the, the first to the fast tracks, the suspension system on it was had accumulators yeah so you're still looking <clears> at <throat> on the front here coil springs which are yes. fairly easy to understand Common, yeah. and on the back you're using i'm going to say citroen car technology yes exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, accumulator and any car yeah. mechanic anybody that worked with citroen on it would yeah, be like familiar with exactly the accumulator type. Like yeah that. they all had, had the similar type system and the beauty of that was when you put a plow or an implement or something on the back of it, yeah. it would initially sit down and then it would raise itself up so you yeah. kept a good level. But it's, it's more, I mean, how about a plow, it actually doesn't affect that on the tree point thing. Tree no. thing, it doesn't affect the suspension. No. But if you mount something on the chassis. On the chassis, sorry, sorry on the, the chassis. Okay, okay, yeah. spray or yes, 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 yes. So it will correct itself. Now we actually have the box out removed at the back at the minute, but there'll be a, a cover over the hydraulics are there. Um, but you could mount a sprayer or you could put a crane or look, yeah. the sky's the limit. There's yeah, yeah. mounted hedge cutters and uh, hoppers for seed drills. Yeah, yeah. You know, you imagine it, yeah. you can make it. You can make it. Well, so JCB, when they were developing this, say, through the, the 80s, they were doing a lot of market research. They yeah. were talking to farmers that had tractors out. I think the original concept was called the uh, HMV. HMV, High Mobility Vehicle. Vehicle, yeah. yeah so you will um, actually see some very early uh, footage of tracks just literally says HMV, the word fast track isn't used. Isn't used, yeah, yeah. Initially it was just at the prototype at stage. The prototype stage, and then it was launched at the Springfield show in 1991. Yeah. Um, and the first, as you said, the 125, the 145, and... Yeah. So Perkins engine then. Perkins engine, that was the, the yeah. Engine of choice at the Yeah, time. so they, obviously, they were very, very well received, especially in, in the UK, where that need for faster speeds and yeah. comfort between farms when you have lads going between farms doing work on top of the ground yeah a lot of transport work and hauling or produce yeah. or grain or whatever it's the next farm or next yeah. door or whatever it is but um yeah they hit the ground running when mb track had left the market had left the market yeah so we would have an awful lot of customers we would find that in days gone by yeah yeah once upon a time owned an mb track mb so, track yeah so because they like that style and it suited yeah. them yeah. Yeah, yeah especially for sprayers and initially with, with sprayers not they were very popular. Sprayer, yeah. Very, sprayers, very, yeah. Popular, very yeah popular. um Limitations then, I suppose, of the 145 when you look at field work, <laughs> ploughing maybe yeah. and stuff like that. Well, look, a lot of them are actually built as 80 km model tractors at the start, so all 80k models of 24 inch wheels. Yes. And that's to do with actually the speed rating on tires. Yes. Because you cannot have a 30 inch wheel running, running above 65k. 65k, it's not yeah. legal. It's, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. tires built for that. Yeah. Um, so all the tires were 24 inch, but that did, did limit both ground clearance and traction off road. Off road, yeah. But it uh, left for fantastic. You know, nearly truck type road holding. Road holding. You had brakes, uh, like on later models, like for instance, these tractors here would have ABS on them. Mm. You know, so they evolved onto that. Electric windows. Uh, no, well, electric windows is uh, the, the, the early ones. Yeah, the early. You know, the spot the early <coughs> classics with the wind down. Wind windows. Down. Okay. So you had the old conventional yeah, yeah, window yeah. winder. If yeah, you yeah. hadn't uh, went for top spec, but you could actually have two buttons. For electric windows. Up, but that was only literally till about ninety three. So yeah, yeah. It, it sort of limited the view because the glass. Only came down halfway. Oh, so yeah. this big panel. Panel, yeah, yeah. Like a car door. Yeah, that I had to go down. The glass had to go down. Yeah, not really the job on a agricultural yeah. tractor. So. My, my first, my first experience of the fast driving the fast track. I was probably sixteen or seventeen. I was working for Ian Timmons at the time, mm. and we had a fast track. I don't know what I can't remember. Was a trader then or what? Yeah. But I was using to draw straw from oh. Old Park. Centristown yeah. down to Coot Hill. Four cylinder or six cylinder model, you remember? I honestly, I think it was a one four five. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, we were talking about the fast track. A fast track. Yeah. Sorry, you know, sorry, I, I, yeah. I, in my own head, I'd then be tracking. No, no, no. Sorry, a fast track. Fast track. Yeah. yeah. Um, to draw a straw from yeah. Bow Park to Coot Hill, and I know a couple of runs with it. I was only seventeen or eighteen at the time, 
And it was like, oh man, I was amazed. This and like, was like, how scarce 40k tractors were at the time? Then, yeah, well, time you would have had 2850s and 2600s mm. and stuff like but, that. And the first of the 6000 John Deere's were out at the time. Yeah. But this thing was a different, like, different animal again, you know, I know uh, you grew up on stuff that yeah. was 30k. Lemma had suspension of yeah, 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 yeah. seat. You know, <laughs> and you hit a bump and you, you just, just fell off the roof of the tractor. Yeah, you, you felt every bump on that <laughs> one. Yeah. Well, I, I liked it. I didn't want to tell Ian Timmons that, but I did like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so moving on from that then, I know they had the yeah. thousand, so there was the okay. 11, 15. Right, so you... Uh, it's not going to be hard to see. How did I get so dirty this morning, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moving on from that then. Yeah, yeah so... um. Well, look, uh, the follow-on from the 125, 145, they just used a six-speed manual box. Yes. But there was no splitters of it, no yes. half gears, yes. no, like, dual power, or yes. body power. Yeah. The later models, the 155 and 185 came after, had, at the same time when they brought out that model, they also introduced the 1135, the, well, there was three models, 115, 1125, mm. and 1135, mm. or 1135, if you yeah. that. So they were the, what became the four-wheel steel tractor, which are the older, the older brother of these. Of that, yes. Yeah, so <coughs> person's engine... 55k transmission, full suspension, yeah. outboard brakes, same yeah. as the, all the rest of the fast tracks, and uh, they in particular became very popular with sprayers because of the four wheel steer. Yes. Uh, so tillage on really like that. Yeah. Um, uh, very good on headlands as well. Yeah. You know, so whether you're Sport doing drilling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, whatever at the time, four wheel steer on the headland. Give off a lot of yeah, yeah very good options good. over the older one. Yeah. The yeah. cab then had changed yeah, so to that narrower style. When you look at the two cabs, yeah. so the early cab on the 125, 145 was that basic that cab frame. style, yeah. And they come up with this later type, but a slightly narrower cab for the smaller tractors. Yeah. And it's used on some of the, uh, I think, dump trucks as well. Mm -hmm. It is used on other, okay, other, right. other, other GSP machines. But um, that's the two distinct things between a 2000, 2000. and a sorry, 3000, 3000 on the left and a 2000, 2000 here, yeah. which is, so this is the follow on from the earlier uh, 1000 series, the Lexi 11, 35. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, four wheels DR is the big standout difference. The other major thing that goes with that is full hydrostatics mm. on the steering here. Steering. So that'll be as light as any tractor mm -hmm. that you know. Over here, you're looking at a truck type steering box. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that much more weighted steering, much more uh, familiar if you're a truck man. Truck man yeah. You drive on the road, this will feel very confident. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this is full hydrostatics, so very light, but then at speed, you have to, you be, have to be on your gear. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah, yeah. experienced that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, two different concepts there on the steering yes. and the things. Um, but yeah, that was two standout yeah, differences. differences in them. That then, the 2000, that, that later model, then you're on to, is that a Cummins engine? Yeah, so at this stage, uh, JCB went, they made the move from Perkins engines on the earlier tractors yeah. to Cummins. Cummins. There was a 5.9 Cummins in yeah. the in between models, like the 3220 and yeah. 385 and that. But by the time, uh, I think 2006 came, they went full common rails so into tier three engines here. Okay. They're both on to Cummins 6.7. Yes. On both of these tractors. Yes, both of them, yeah. So uh, that one there put out 230 horsepower <coughs> for this one here, put out a modest 170. 100, yeah. We've tuned some of these, <laughs> and we can tell you they're capable of a lot more. Uh, we've seen these running as high as 280 horsepower. Right. Which makes for, uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot of horsepower yeah, in a uh, compact light tractor. Compact light tractor like that, wow. Yeah, so uh, anyone that's driven one of them that's been remapped after the horsepower, Caleb is first hand experience. <laughs> <laughs> he spent a, a week drawing stone up to this farm here when we bought it first. And uh, I, I'll probably get you a little bit of video footage there just to show. Do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind uh, 07, 2170. And then the same owner, he has the 3230 as well, yeah. running a similar dump trailer. But he just finds it, it's lovely to have two different tractors. Yeah, yeah, What yeah, job yeah. you're doing, always here, great for an awkward sites and mm -hmm. laneways and, you know, things like that. Things but like that, yeah. Doing a lot of road, road hauling. 3,000 that, with the mechanical that, steering box. That's hard that, to beat. Hard to beat. Um, as regards limitations on that, I know disc brakes and stuff like that. Like I don't mean limitations. Yeah. I mean mechanical issues. Issues as regards mm. your normal run of the mill standard okay, tractor. Uh, well, the big positive on that discussion is the brakes are on the outside. Outside. So yeah. anything to do with brakes, no longer having to pull off half shafts. Discs. Yeah, yeah. Nothing going to be affected in your transmission. Yeah, if yeah. Something goes wrong in the brakes. It's literally a disc and pads similar mm -hmm. to Jeeps or in commercial. You know, just think of a bigger scale of what you have on your car. car that's yeah, yeah, a break yeah, 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 yeah. There. But, um, yeah, when it comes to the likes of gearboxes, you know, lads are talking about splitting the tractor or putting the clutch mm. in with a fast track, you're lifting the engine out. No. But thankfully, clutches give the next to no trouble on them, mm. so that's very good news. Gearbox is a bit more involved, 
going to take a lad like myself. Yeah. It's not something for the inexperienced. Yeah, and again, yeah, no, there's no such thing as splitting. Splitting, yeah, something yeah, like that. It'd yeah. be a little bit more like a, a, a truck where you're yeah. going to be removing a gearbox. Lift but in this case, out. some guys would have removed cabs. We tend to take them down and out. Okay. We've got specialized lifting gear for doing yeah, that, yeah. so we, we can shortcut that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so you can have the entire transmission and engine removed, and the tractor would still have, you know, the front axle and the rear axle attached to the Tatchel. chassis. So it's very different yeah. from other tractors. So you do have one complete chassis around and everything yes. is mounted inside that that's yeah, supporting. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah so you have your you know independent suspension links for your yes. front axle and your rear axle and your um engine and transmission are like one complete unit so starting up there at the front of the radiator and ending there more or less at the rear of the cab yeah two mounts at the front two mounts at the rear and all the different sections yeah. together the so. challenges then the jcb would have faced when they were developing the say the the 145 at the start getting the hitch and that getting your ground clearance yeah, because they had that, those twenty-four inch wheels. Yeah, just that, everything had to be. It was uh, interesting, and <coughs> the tractor being so low on small wheels. Mm. Uh, yeah, it didn't make for great ground clearance. But in fairness, most operators compared to modern mm. any modern tractor on the market now, because they actually developed the hitch around the yeah. axle was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Built by an Irish manufacturer, their own engine. Their own, yeah, no castles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So <coughs> you're a proud Irish link there. Yeah. Um, just when we are talking about an Irish link, and this is really one other little thing. We were saying, yeah, <coughs> even the diesel tanks. Terrible. Uh, Kingspan Company. Oh, all right, Kingspan. Kingspan yeah, Kingspan yeah, yeah. In Kingsford County Kingsford, Cabin. Yeah, yeah. And it's obviously uh, next maybe, door, yeah. I'm going to say an English company. At, uh, yeah, but it's bought. Irish base. So there's a few uh, Irish heritage. components on the fast. Track, yeah, so that's and interesting. A question for yourself. A little bit of information. I don't know whether you know. Do you know who the chief engineer was that designed the fast track? What his name was? Oh, I'm not going to try and go to that now. I, I'd say yeah, I'm aware of who he is, but <laughs> David I Brown. No, it's nothing got to do oh, with David Brown. Oh, tell me that. His name. His name was David Brown. I don't remember reading that. you said. Yeah, David Brown. Yeah, I actually found that out last night with doing a little bit of research so that's go. an interesting point there now, yeah <laughs> so he stopped building 996 <laughs> <laughs> yeah he uh, moved, no, moved up in the world i, I yeah. doubt it was the same guy no 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 so as regards uh what you do down here with the jcbs yeah, so look, just a little bit of promotion for yourself what do you yeah so look we're selling fast tracks mm. um it's just whatever comes along we we don't mind the older models yeah. right up to present day yeah but um we have a, a huge fondness for the 3000 series in particular mm. and we just have turned over that many of them uh, and the 2000 series just rebuilding transmissions differentials yeah. uh cosmetics you know whatever, whatever it takes to turn the fast track around into as near to new as possible we'll do. Yeah, yeah you know so whether it's for a customer or for something we're selling you know, yeah we, we make it happen and they are alive so, they are alive yeah tractors. absolutely that's i have to say you now the smooth shift tractors they have absolutely they're, they're uh, appreciate this, something I can describe it as in mm. rising and rising value. value yeah. Because they stopped building them, like the last of the 3000 series model mm. was 2010, okay. and the last of the 2000 series was 2014. 14, so we have yeah. two uh, latest models here, yeah, yeah. but really holding our money uh, and rising in value. That's yeah. all I can say. So if one comes along with reasonably low hours on it, yeah. in good condition, or we put it through the garage and we we'll turn, we'll turn it around, like as in whether we rebuild gearboxes and cosmetics and mm. whatever it takes. But when you have the right machine there, it's going to make top money. Yeah, yeah. Because like that, they only have a built-in small numbers. You know, fast tracks only have a built-in hundreds, not hundreds, thousands. Thousands, yeah. You know, where you know, New Hollands and John Deere's are churned out thousands, thousands and thousands, thousands every year. Yeah, yeah. And you know, there's <coughs> lots of them around. If you want to go look for a fast track, you may have to, you know, mm. search hard to mm. find the model you want, whether it's UK, Ireland, or maybe in Europe. In Europe, yeah. Um, but like this one here, for instance, came from um, came from Norway. Okay. This was running on a snow plow originally when we oh, bought right. it. It had actually got um, studs on the tires. Oh, right. Interesting. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so the front linkage had, uh, not, not the linkage was modified, but there was a lot of extras. There was a serious amount of pipe work and wiring for extra lights mm -hmm. and God knows what. Um, and they had even, uh, I think, their own special controls in it for the, for the snow for plow. For working the snow plow, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I never have seen. Uh, fast like running on studded tyres before. No, no, it was interesting. Yeah, and you have yeah. a nice set of BKTs on it. Yeah, so yeah. look, we just said we put on standard tyres and said they were the road pattern tyres. Ah, yeah. Every, every user. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and is there a demand then? Are you finding that? Oh, yeah. That you know, we, we've lads, you know, waiting for, waiting for, for the them, tractors, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we have both of these sold. Oh, right. Find well, new homes. So there's, uh, what's in that, 5,800 hours on this 3230, which is 07. I think it's standing well, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And that one there, we have, uh, I think it's just over five and a half thousand hours on that, and uh, quite a local track, I think. You know it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I do. So working on a local tillage farm. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> a wee bit of a custom paint job with the owner. The yeah, they are. Normally, they're they're not not the bit, well, the size of them, you know, you can go. Yeah, 600. 600, but we should have. I actually haven't watched that at all. That's the truth. <laughs> so, um, ease of access then for servicing. Yeah, know. so it's quite good at the bonnet up, as you can see. Now, Obviously a chassis to walk around, 
uh, advisor put on full lock, we even start going looking mm. for filters or fan belts or whatever else you work on today. Um, but no, Cummins engine's been very, very reliable. Uh, tier 3, lots of fun to drive as in, it's very talky at standard mm -hmm. and we've remapped quite a few of them as well. Yeah. Interesting to see them on the dyno now. Yeah. We've, we've had a couple of these now, you can literally, you know, on a dyno test on a dark day like today, you can see the manifold glowing. Glow it's quite impressive. <laughs> Um, but we've seen them pushing out standard or about 212, 213 on the PTO this model. We've seen them putting out as high as 250 on the PTO, yeah. which is, you know, kicking arse of 280 wow. horsepower. Yeah. That makes for some rapid acceleration yeah. on Crazy. a tractor. So we're dealing with the, as I said, the Ferraris of the tractor world here. Yeah, yeah. I definitely describe the 2170 as the bit of the pocket rock, the Golf GTI. Yeah, yeah. That's the one that really, when it's tuned like that, it's just so uh, exhilarating it's, it's, to drive it's with. Yeah. <laughs> demonstration of the four-wheel steer at the crossroad here Alan. So usually when lads are going round in circles at crossroads it's usually in uh... <laughs> a tw twin cam Corolla. <laughs> yeah something like that. Or, uh, I know yeah it's 200. So... So that's a pretty tasty turn and circle yeah, I think. That's really, yeah that's class yeah. yeah, so, that uh, is, yeah. So uh, yeah, you're saying on the 2000 series, the doors open backwards. Yeah, so the rear hinge. So uh, we we used to have a fly window. Yeah. Left for a bit of natural ventilation. Yeah. We could actually open that window on the earlier. That's F45. right. Yeah. Done away with that, unfortunately. Where the mid air con standard. Standard. Yeah. Was hard to be a fresh air. Fresh air <laughs> and sound the exhaust. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> so moving into the cab then. Um, so yeah, look, most of the controls are. Standard across the fast track, you know, the dashboard is not unusual, the gear change, you still have the old fashioned long gear lever, which is the early tractors, you're onto a short gear lever, we've yeah. seen in a few months in the yeah. 3000s, but uh, over here we have electric fuel valves on it, and then we have the control panel for the four wheel steer, so it's quite different to what's on the um, later 4000s, and um, this here you would select by pressing two buttons like that, that would activate your four wheel steer mode and it uh, operates up to 20 kilometers per hour and then we, if you say travel on the road and you get to 20k it'll automatically switch off for safety because there's no need for forward no steer at speed so uh very popular when you're you know, getting in out of awkward gateways or laneways or whatever it is or head on work mm -hmm. that's the big thing so you can automate have it automated so when you uh, drop your say a rear linkage the forward steer will cut in and cut out based on that and you can have different modes where you can have it doing true tracking which works for tramline and you know follows the wheels exactly we can have a proportion where it'll do a two to one ratio of you know say 20 degrees on the front axle and 10 degrees in the back or you'll have a delay mode where it'll wait until you hit at least 20 degrees steering on the front and then kick in the back axle and then it'll follow so you'll end up steering to 40 degrees in the front okay. 20 degrees in the back so yeah. it will out maneuver any tractor of its size you'll yeah. always have you know 60 degrees of steering which will beat the competition Absolutely. 50 is about the norm on the yeah front yeah probably is yeah so fast track goes from being a kind of a slightly clumpy tractor to the most maneuverable out there okay, which yeah. we hopefully especially with forward steer yeah. yeah and you don't have to stand on the side brakes <laughs> <laughs> no you only get one pedal you only get one pedal you definitely don't want to be standing on the side brakes doing 65k i can tell you <laughs> well, no, talk to me about your spool controls right alan so we were mentioning uh, electric spool valves were fitted on most of the fast tracks yeah of this era but to give a lot of trouble so we have successfully come up with a repair and it means also a new set of controls so we have electric fingertip controls for all your auxiliary valves blue green brown white it's quite simple and you nice little switch on and off there so i think that's uh, a good repair yeah we've seen lads adding big mechanical levers which i think are a bit of a joke they look very untidy very out of date but that there for tipping the trailer 
And this is your own, this oh, is this your own, is your own. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I spent a few nights scratching my head to say the least before I got that right. You got it right, yeah. But uh, if you want to look out the back window, we'll yeah, show you we'll quickly. The back. So this is your valve block down here, Alan, and like that we have this repair has been complete successfully so we still have four valves available we have mechanical flow control it's no longer any of that uh want to say troublesome headland management system which should work which generally doesn't also uh, so as that says if the lever just moves and it works i'd be happy so mm. we keep it fairly simple so for trailer work tanker work lifting and dropping the mower or whatever else you're into you know tankers um, all that sort of stuff works well you have a good uh, clear shot here of the abs brakes on this tractor so you have twin calipers on the 3230 here the tractor beside us now would only have single calipers with 2170 but um you had the option of twin calipers on the smaller tractor as well the likes of the 3200 is what it comes standard with single calipers and uh, standard in this model so as you can see the fairly conventional looking brake calipers quite easy to access you can literally see them from the driver's seat so there's a problem there open the window <laughs> and you can see smell. yeah something something sounds wrong or smells wrong yeah, yeah yeah so you can work on them you don't need any special technology and to nobody's ever found any issues with straw getting caught around the or uh, no i probably you know, mentioned something like that probably thinking of the likes of dice tractors not when they're using dry brakes i remember the first of the, the john deere 2850s and that the 40ks oh, they had, had a, a brake shaft. caliper on the prop shaft yeah, and the if you're caliper. bailing or anything with it yeah you're in trouble yeah, so you'd have to be careful to make sure you kept the caliper clear and yeah. clean. So this series here, the 3000 with the smooth shift gearbox ended in 2010, was followed on with the P-Tronic uh, transmission. So that was a semi-power shift, 24 speed unit. The 2000 series continued until 2014. So this is quite a late model and we have another 14 one there in the yard at the minute. But uh, they continued with production with the smooth shift gearbox right up until the introduction of the 4220 and the 4190 4160 that replaced them yeah so yeah moving on to what, what's out there now so. yeah so um the 4020 then 2015 2016 hit the market so initially some prototype models and then full tilt uh with production of them uh, the icon model has followed on there mm. as recent as last year and that, that's uh, got a, a very good reception because yeah. It brought the cab right up to date with yeah. the controls and ISO bus and all that sort of stuff. The newer model's then Sisu engine, is it? Yeah, Sisu. Uh, there's a 6.6 .6 in the 4000 series and uh, 7.4 was using the P-Tronic yeah. tractors and that has... Uh, I get that. So, um, yeah, so your 8000 8 series tractor, which is the 8250 using the Fent Vario gearbox, that uh, continued until the introduction of the Sisu engine in mm. the later 8000s, 8310s, 8330s. Uh, so up to present day so you're left uh, unfortunately with a little bit of a gap in the lineup for the 4020 which is a fantastic replacement for the 2000 series because it's a step up uh, it's probably a good replacement yeah for the 3230 but uh, sometimes people like to keep moving up a little up bit later. more and you're into the monster size track yes. the 8330 so the sooner mm. JSP get that finger out and bring out the <laughs> six thousand or five thousand series. Something in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, no. That's Depend fantastic. Yeah. Listen, we Robert. That space. Maybe we build one ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never know there's a market for it. Um listen, thanks a million uh for spending the time. It's yep. in the morning, it's windy and it's rainy and you're right oh, in the middle of it. So it's up for mass anyway, so why not? Yeah, I'm sure you are, yeah. Um so yeah, no look, it's great to chat to you. Yeah. Great Sorry, to get Ka Caleb didn't make a whole lot of Caleb is he's, he's gone camera shy now since he left and he yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, I think he's in love or something. Oh is he? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know I know a lad is like that as well. Rune Melly's a good man. Yeah, and we're looking hundred percent. Thanks a million. Uh, for listen, time. I'm uh, delighted to be uh, associated with your yeah. channel. I've been finding it interesting and yeah. we're watching that. And yeah. so maybe we might do. You're learning a bit. Yeah, we might have some more. A few uh, more bits and pieces coming down uh, the maybe, line. Maybe not yellow. We might find a different brand. We might find a different colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound. Okay. And that is it for the JCB Fast Track. Uh, so, yeah, a huge thank you to Robert for inviting me down for the day uh, to ha have a good chat about the Fast Track, talk through the history, talk through the, the mechanics of the Fast Track. Um, because what that man knows about, what does know about JCB Fast Tracks is not worth knowing. Uh, he probably knows more about them than JCB do themselves. Um, 
So yeah, I know it was a very wet, it was a very windy day, but we did manage to get a great, some great footage. Uh, we had put it off earlier in the month because of storms and stuff, but I really wanted to get this video out. So uh, thanks a million to Robert uh, and his son, Caleb, that is in the business with him now as well. Uh, they run a great operation down there. So if you have a fast track, if you're, if you're in the market for one, um, there's no better place uh, in the country that you could go to, to pick up a really, really good, well looked after, well minded, well prepared second hand uh, JCB fast track. Um, I'll drop a link into the description section of this video uh, to to uh, the lads' social pages uh, if you just want to check them out or have a look and see what they're about. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's a fantastic tractor. I am surprised that other manufacturers haven't, you know, somewhere along their line within their range ha have put a tractor that's as versatile as the fast track that's a, you know, high speed, has high speed capabilities that is almost truck like. Um, that they, they haven't they haven't got look at maybe there's not a market maybe JCB have the market market cornered it's quite likely, um but when you look at the earlier JCB how it has evolved to this machine that's as capable in the field as most modern tractors and is more capable on the road than any of them, um it really is a highly versatile machine, um for haulage and for for land work as well, um so yeah if you have a JCB fast track. As always, um, if you've driven one, if you've worked for someone that has one, if you're in the plant industry and you drive one, uh, please uh, drop a comment into the comics, comment section. Let us know what you think of them, your favorite models, your favorite transmission systems, um, what you use them for, uh, whether you found them good, bad or indifferent, it doesn't matter. Um, every comment here is, uh, is going to be taken seriously. Uh, and is very much appreciated. Um, so that's it for this week, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this. A very, very different video to our normal videos. It's great to get out and talk to people and get out and actually see the machines and sit in them and drive them. Um, it's fantastic to, uh, just to offer something different to the channel going forward. Um, so that's it. So unt until next week, uh, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done already. And I will see you all in the next one. Thanks.